I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Paul May with the May team of EXP Realty. Thanks for joining us. We're going to conduct these type of town meetings in a Facebook setting and in a Zoom setting to assist all of our people that are, have questions out there as to what's going on in the Las Vegas market. So thank you for joining us. And those of you that are on Facebook, uh, thank you for joining us as well. I have with me my guests, Mr. Joe Cordone with Guaranteed Rate and Mr. Larry Perna with Bridge Home Inspections and my lovely wife, Jennifer May with the May team joining us today. And for those of you that are on the Zoom conference, thank you so much. And if you have questions while we're going through all of the material today, please in the chat section, just uh, type into the chat section any questions that you have while we're going through all of this. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen real quick to show you some of the information that I have on the screen. Everybody raise your hand if you can see this. Can you guys see the market watch screen right there? Fantastic. So what we're experiencing right now in real estate in the Las Vegas market is limited inventory still. Um, and obviously it's due to the slowdown, the COVID slowdown. A lot of this information is gonna be about what we are all experiencing. And this information right here is in regards to what's happening in the Las Vegas market. Currently, there's a total of 5,486 homes available. And just this past week, if you look at this section here, new listings, 660 listings, 300 came back on the market, 520 had a price decrease, 72 had a price increase, I don't know why, and then the combination of under contract is 497. We had 663 homes sell in the past seven days. 195 expired, 74 went off the market, and then 93 and 80 were withdrawn. And then we have 36 listings coming soon to the Las Vegas market. So what this indicates is that real estate is still happening it's just that we're all facing challenges in regards to what's going on in the market, especially when it comes to showing properties, conducting loans, but all the professionals you see here are actively in the midst of doing their jobs and helping the consumers when it comes to real estate. What we have done, the May team, is we have basically created a lot of information online can you guys see the May Team Realty webinar site? Yeah, great. So I created this webinar site right here. Click here to register and instantly receive all the links and information we're gonna share. All you have to do is click register and you'll get all of the links that I'm about to share in this webinar. And what we're doing to overcome listing appointments in person, all you have to do is text us and we'll be able to conduct what we're doing right now, which is a Zoom conference. Zoom is awesome when it comes to conducting online consultations, either for buyers or for sellers. And all you have to do is text us and then click this button and that connects you right to the Zoom conference that we're currently using. The next information here is that what we're doing to overcome the uh, showings of properties, can you guys see the lovely wife on the right and then my lovely agent Trish in the middle? Everybody see that video? Yes? Yep. Great. We're conducting live Facebook open houses as well as video open houses to basically be able to help consumers when we're coming to promote their homes. Right now, the governor has said no open houses and limited showings. As far as the way we're conducting showings is we're conducting social distancing showings by making sure that our sellers, if a homeowner or a potential home buyer wants to buy a home, well, what they're doing is uh, we're having the sellers turn on all the lights, open all the doors, and then stay six feet apart from everyone and conduct the showing and then leave and then we get feedback. But a lot of homeowners are ultimately concerned about anyone coming in the home at this time. And that's why we are conducting 
video open house tours, live open house tours, showing off properties in a video format as well as live on Facebook. A uh, beautiful home located up here in Summerlin. Now, when it comes to selling a home, what we're doing is we're doing online listing consultations. So if you guys can see this video here, what this is showing is some of the marketing and advertising that Jennifer and I do to market and sell a home. And then also what we're showing is we have a video conference with the seller to show you what you can potentially sell your home for in this market. So we, we conduct a CMA, but instead of doing it at your home, we can do the market analysis live in a call conference on, on, on the uh, you know, Zoom conference, or we can send you a video showing you what your home will potentially sell for and showing you how much money you'll walk away with at the end of the sale. But when it comes to conducting uh, a purchase, that's why I have Mr. Joe Cordone here with us. And there's Joe's website. Joe, thanks for joining us. Can you hear me okay, my friend? I can hear you perfectly. Thanks, Paul. Terrific. Can you guys see Joe's website up there? Awesome. Now, Joe, if you could share with us, sir, some of the uh, things that are going on in the mortgage market right now in regards to uh, qualifying home buyers for loans. I know that in Las Vegas, currently we have a situation where there's a lot of people out of work and we're a service oriented uh, business, but there are still uh, people with essential jobs. I would assume when it comes to currently qualifying someone to take advantage of the low interest rates, that's something that you're still able to help them do. Just share with us what's going on in the mortgage market right now. Of course, happy to. So right now, when we're talking to applicants, as you touched on, you know, we do need to make sure that they're working, but a large segment of Las Vegas and Henderson is still working. You know, yes, tourism helps boost the economy, but we have a great infrastructure and there's quite a few people still working, but we do need to validate that. So when we're talking to people, we are validating that they are working. And then obviously going through the normal pre-approval process where we're talking about income, assets, you know, credit scores, things like that. So it's a normal pre-qualification and then just outside of just validating their employment and then, you know, obviously seeing how much they qualify for, talking about the current market. And as you touched on earlier, rates have been great. You know, they've been going down consistently over the last few weeks. Now, I will say that over the last few weeks, so with the volatility in the mortgage industry um, and what's going on with Corona and things like that, we have seen some spikes with rates over the last couple of weeks. It's almost, I call it the roller coaster effect, where we've seen rates go up, we've seen them go down. Um, over the last four or five days, we've seen them tread down again. And um, as of this morning, they were probably the lowest I've seen in quite a while. So now is a great time to definitely get pre-qualified and uh, try to take advantage of these low rates. I actually have two buyers that have gone into contract during the beginning of COVID. Uh, we're still selling homes because of the fact that the mortgage rates are so attractive. Everyone needs a place to live. And so it's good to see that people are still, you know, carrying on with their lives amidst what we're facing right now and, and living the American dream and coming in and buying a home uh, is obviously something everybody wants to do despite the challenges that are happening. And, and there are people that want to move and ultimately find a, a new place or downsize or upsize depending upon their situation. And right now, because the rates are so great, they can actually take advantage of that, right, Joe? Absolutely. So all of the programs that were initially there are still available. There has been some uh, changes, especially in the government section and jumbo section, but you know, qualified buyers are still getting qualified and able to take, uh, take full advantage of these low rates. So, you know, it, it is important in a time like this to work with a mortgage professional that has experience, that understands the market and can work with your buyers to make sure that people are being pre-qualified with some of the changes that have gone on over the last couple of weeks. Gotcha. Now, Sylvia is asking, I'm currently in an escrow and the last rate quote was 3.75%. Uh, do you, is that the going rate right now, Joe, or is it really indicative of various things? Thanks for the question, Sylvia. 
No, it's a great question. It, it, vary, it varies depending on the type of loan that they're doing, loan to value and credit score. So if, I don't know if she mentioned the type of loan she's doing. I mean, 3.75 is not a bad rate, um, but if she was doing say an FHA or VA loan, the rate on that is going to be quite a bit lower. On conventional, that's a competitive rate. Gotcha. Now, when it comes to cash out refinancing, I know a lot of homeowners, especially you know folks that need some equity out of their home, this is obviously a situation where a lot of people have equity because we've built up equity over the past few years. Uh, are you experiencing cash out refinances, Joe? Yeah, I've seen actually an uptick in people wanting to take out cash. Um, I think part of it's doing due to they want that security of having cash on hand. And I think other people honestly want to take advantage of, you know, some of these opportunities for investment, either with homes or with the stock market. So we've seen a definite uptick with people wanting to take cash out right now. Gotcha. And I noticed that your company has now become one of the first companies that says here, close your customers with 0% physical human contact. Can you go over what that is? Uh, obviously it's something that is gonna benefit everyone right now as far as not having to uh, get out in the car and ultimately share what this is. Yeah, I love what we've rolled out, especially during the, these tough times where people are uncomfortable having other people around as you touched on earlier. Um, so what this is, is we have the ability to do a complete uh, beginning to end application with no human contact. It starts with doing an online application. Um, it's followed up, you know, obviously we'll do everything via phone and email after they do the initial application. The appraisers, we're getting a lot of appraisal waivers. So, you know, appraisals don't need to be done, but in the cases of when appraisals do need to be done on owner occupied and the majority of the second homes, we can now do drive-by appraisals or desktop appraisals. So again, appraisers are not needing to go into the homes to, and interact with anyone one-on-one. -on -one. So if people didn't want people, you know, appraisers in their home, they don't have to worry about that um, on owner occupied and the majority of second home purchases or refinances. So mm -hmm. we can definitely assist with that. And then when it comes to tight um, signing, we have what's called flash close, where the buyers can sign a majority of their documents um, through DocuSign on their phone, tablet, or PC. And then we also have eClose, which is the ability to do a web-based uh, virtual signing with a mobile notary. So again, you're not having to go into a title company and sign and be in front of some, you know, and be in front of someone, even if you're six feet apart. You know, I know a lot of people just in these times, they're not wanting that human contact. So again, with our virtual online mobile notary, they don't need to do that. And uh, we can, again, do everything cradle to grave without any human contact. Wow, that's amazing. So as far as it's a mobile notary that uh, agrees to conduct the, um, the signing and approve all of the documents without you physically having to sign. That is correct. And we're doing that right now on conventional loans. We're waiting, uh, we're trying to get permission from Jenny May and HUD to do this on government loans. So we're not able to offer the full e-close with the online mobile notary on FHA or VA, but we are unconventional at this time. That's really cool. So we're doing virtual open houses. We're doing virtual uh, listing appointments and consultations for buyers. Joe is helping people sign virtually, but the one thing that can't be done on a virtual basis is a home inspection when you're a buyer. And we have Mr. Larry Perna here with Bridge Home Inspections. How are you, Larry? Good, how are you guys? Doing great, man. So this is Larry's website, lasvegashomeinspections.com. I've worked with Larry on a long, a number of years now, since 2010, I believe is when we kind of started, or maybe a little bit before then. But Larry is one of the largest home inspection companies in, the, in, the, in Nevada. He uh, does, uh, what's the current state of uh, home inspections, Larry, as far as the amount that you normally do compared to the amount that you're doing now? That's a good litmus test to see what's going Pretty on. Pretty much follow there. your cycle, you know, so February, March, April, May, and June are our, our Christmas months, you know, and so we typically we'll do 400 inspections a month this time of year. I think last month we closed out at 456. Wow. So we were doing, uh, you know, 18, 20 a day. 
I think today we did seven. Tomorrow we've got 11 on the books. So okay. it is definitely slower, but we are still doing home inspections. And we just have a couple extra precautions. You know, we're asking people not to be present when we do it. We can do a, uh, a video walkthrough debrief at the end of the inspection if the buyer uh, would like. Of course, they're going to get their full electronic report and uh, with all the pictures and videos that we normally take. But if sometimes they want a specific room or they just want to be walked around the house to look at it one more time, we do that for them. So you know, if there's sick people in the house, we want to know about that ahead of time. Right. Our guys are wearing gloves, masks. We're just trying to do the best we can. Uh, we love to have a vacant house. Not, unfortunately, not 100% of them are vacant. So we have to just ask maybe some, most of the buyers actually are leaving before we show up. Gotcha. So we appreciate that. And everyone seems to be working together. They are getting done. They get the report the next day still. So everything otherwise is the same. Just a little bit slower volume than we're used to. Um, but, you know, people are still buying houses. So the order of events that you're doing is, and, and Sylvia is one of them. That's great, Sylvia. Uh, so what you're doing right now, fantastic. Nice. So what you're doing, Larry, is you, you say, don't show up for the entire inspection, which even when it's not a, a situation where we need to be social distancing, the best thing to do is to have the home inspector do his job and then afterwards meet and go over some of the items that are of concern. But what you're doing now is you're doing a face-to-face uh, -face, uh, iPhone chat and FaceTime and point things out. Is that correct? That is correct. There's been a few people who had to be there, right? They drove in from California or whatever, and they had, to, that's fine too. Um, usually the buyer is accommodating to our requests and we do of course keep the distance, but we, we, we can take a photo and just show it to them on the phone and go, okay, I found this in the attic. I found this on the roof. They're not going to get on the roof or in the attic anyhow. So a picture is worth a thousand words. And, uh, but we find a lot less people at our inspections these days. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, uh, the next thing I'm going to share uh, with you guys and Larry, if you have to go, I completely understand. But if you guys want to hang out, I'm going to share uh, some of the other information that I was sharing online that we were going to be talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and share this real quick. Um, again, all the links that I'm sharing today are going to be on our webinar and make sure to uh, check out the webinar link and register and you'll get all the links that we're sharing. You'll get our information, you'll get Joe's information, you'll get Larry's information, and then we'll continue on with some of the things that uh, are all on everybody's mind, which is for those of you out there, can you guys see the uh, SBA? Uh, wait, raise your hand if you can see it, fantastic. So this is the site to go to as far as 1099 employees, W2 employees, uh, small businesses. This is the site that is the federal government site where you can apply for disaster assistance. Um, ultimately, it's created for everybody to apply and receive some type of assistance. And it depends upon if you're a 1099 W-2 self-employed corporation. It has different choices, but this is the site to go to and to start to apply for the COVID-19 disaster relief. There's a lot of information on this site. We're gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this and putting it into a, uh, a document for everyone. It's gonna have a number of different links. All you have to do is just register at the, uh, at the webinar that I'm gonna post before I forget. I'm gonna post our link here, May Team Realty webinar in the chat box here. I'm gonna post it right here before I forget. Go to uh, chat here. And this link that I'm posting in the Zoom chat is for you to save. And uh, ultimately right here, if you guys can see, click here to register and instantly receive all of the links and information. That's where you'll get all of these links that I am sharing right now. 
So we have the uh, federal assistance that's going on right here, the disaster loan assistance. This is the actual form that you fill out to get the disaster relief and dependent again upon, you know, it has all these check marks. Applicant is a business with not more than 500 employees. That would be me, uh, you know, so ultimately the big corporations, the wins, the, the Bellagio, they're all dealing with the federal government on a much bigger level. But as far as small businesses, this is where small businesses can go to start to get that information. Now, when it comes to uh, Fannie Mae loans, uh, this is the website, Fannie Mae, that shows that right now foreclosure sales and evictions of borrowers are being suspended for 60 days on a federal guideline basis. The Fannie Mae website right here, 60 days, is the amount of time the Fed says that they're going to hold off on foreclosures and evictions. Now, when it comes to a um, state guideline, it's 90 days. So here in the state of Nevada, we have a 90-day uh, moratorium on foreclosures and evictions. So that's good news for all of the folks out there that are ultimately worried about what's going to happen. And the fact of the matter is that there's going to be forbearance loans. Joe, maybe you can talk about that a little bit as far as what they're doing as far as forbearance for homeowners that cannot continue to make their payments. Can you share some information on that, Joe? Yeah, happy to. So what this is, it's set up for people in their owner-occupied properties. So it's not really going to help people that have investment properties. But for your owner-occupied properties, um, if you've been affected by the COVID-19 epidemic and you're out of work or seen your income drastically cut, you can call your current servicer, um, talk to them. They're going to ask you a bunch of questions. You're going to have to probably send them some documentation. And based on your level of income being cut, your debts, things like that, they can give you, most lenders are what they're doing is doing a 90-day forbearance right now and then reevaluating every 90 days. And gotcha. I do want to point out though, it, the fact that, it's being, that it is a forbearance, it is not releasing the people from having to make the payments eventually. It's just basically kicking the can down the street for 90, 120 days, 180 days. But at some point, they're either going to want that money made up or they're going to have to do some type of loan modification um, at some point. But obviously, you know, that's, an argument and a conversation for a later time. They're hoping that people get back to work, um, you know, sometime in the next few months. You know, obviously we don't know how long this is going to last, but at some point go back to work, get caught up and make those payments. Um, but they are trying to work with everyone that has been affected and out of work. So it's not, it's a lot different than 2008 and nine right. where lenders were playing games. The lenders are really aren't playing games from what I'm reading so far and everything that's being reported. They truly are trying to help people that have been affected. Um, they did point out they're getting a call from a lot of people that are still employed and making their normal income. And those people may not be able to do a forbearance. So this is for people that have been affected, um, had their job hours cut, you know, or had to go on furlough or be laid off. So, right. You know, this is a great, this is a great alternative for people who are worried about their mortgage payments and, you know, being able to stay in their home. They have that security now of being able to stay in their home for at least 90 days and hopefully a lot longer. Absolutely. Thanks, Joe. Sylvia had asked, uh, what about renters? And uh, I have the site for that as well. Uh, Sylvia, thanks for the question. So we have FHFA, which is uh, the Federal Housing Finance Agency, and they're talking about suspending foreclosures and evictions on a federal level on, and as far as uh, that's concerned. But here's the other site right here. And this is a link that's gonna be on the list of all the links that we're gonna share with you. This was a great uh, article in the Channel 8 News. Governor Sisolak talked about the fact that he is going to suspend evictions and foreclosures for renters and give relief to homeowners. And we have a lovely state assemblywoman here in the house, Ms. Sandra Howdy. How are you? Sandra, thanks for joining us. 
Oh, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. So there you go. Thanks. Yeah, I just unmuted myself. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm sorry I'm Absolutely. a little late, but happy That's to okay. be here. Yeah, and I actually have some great links that I'll share with you, Paul, so you can share as well as far as resources. I've put a great list of resources together for my district that I've sent out to my constituents. Um, I know you touched a little bit right now on the moratorium that Governor Sisolak um, put in place. And I have a great link that leads directly to the Attorney General's office um, to file complaints if there is landlords who aren't following the eviction orders. And uh, that was something that came up in the uh, Las Vegas Review Journal today. There are those nasty bad actors out there that are currently trying to still evict people in this situation, which is unbelievable. But the good news is that our, our federal government, our state government, Sandra, ladies and gentlemen, I'll share this with you here. Sandra is not only a, a, a representative, marketing representative with Tycor title, uh, she's our, our marketing guru, per se, and I'm going to share this here. So there's Sandra. Can you see your, your lovely face there? On, I can. On Tycor oh, no, I need to update my picture. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's where you can recommend. But Tycor Title is one of our escrow companies that we utilize to close transactions. Sandra is also the assemblywoman for the state of Nevada in a particular District 41, correct, Sandra? Correct, yes, awesome. District 41. I have unincorporated Clark County and Henderson. So uh, why don't you share with us real quick, Sandra, what's going on on a state level? Because I'm so glad you joined us because you know we have a state assemblywoman to share some of the information right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think our governor did done a great job of getting out in front of this. Um, he, he came out really early and issued stay at home orders. Um, he's recently come out and extended them, you know, um, for all non essential businesses and everyone seems to be following them. There was a uh, northern Nevada, Washoe County and specifically Reno actually got ahead of us um, before and their mayor um, went out and issued stay-at-home orders before even our governor did. So that's really good that Nevada's um, cooperating with the stay-at-home orders, which is going to be really helpful in the long run for us. Um, he did come out and issue just um, an extension, a two-week extension for all non-essential businesses to be closed, as well as um, schools. Um, the good news is, though, a Clark County school districts and all the school districts throughout the state have um, agreed that they're still going to be issuing a school lunches and breakfasts for all the students who were on free and reduced lunch. So that was... Um, that had, yeah, that's really great because that had continued through the first um, order the governor gave and then they extended it during the spring break and they're going to continue to do it all the way through the end of the month as well. And so I'll send you all those resources where people can go and look at the locations where they can go and pick up breakfast and a lunch for their students they're at, who are at home right now. Right. And, and also, um, it, I think it, it's been great, you know, um, the Department of Training and Rehabilitation has staffed up. They hired 41 more full-time employees and they hired another, I believe, a 20 plus part-time employees to help with the number of people who are calling and, and sending emails. Um, I have some great links. So if people are having a difficult time getting through to the Department of Training and Rehabilitation to file their unemployment claims, that'll help. Mm -hmm. A lot of the issues that I've heard coming in is that um, people who previously had an account with Dieter and have since forgot their password. That's where they're running into trouble. So I have some links for those people. We also have some links um, and tutorials on how they can create their account if they haven't, and then how they can bypass the job search requirement. Because in a normal situation, um, they have to fill out a list of places where they have applied for employment, but the governor has waived any requirements or any criteria that people need in order to apply for um, unemployment. So they can just go ahead and apply if they've been furloughed or let go, um, and then they would get their weekly unemployment benefits. And as soon as um, uh, Teeter actually receives their uh, regulations from the Department of Labor, then they'll start adding in that additional $600 per um, um, recipient. Got it. So uh, this is the Clark County website, the COVID-19 update site. I'm sure you probably are going to share this with me as well, Sandra. And then obviously there's the uh, Nevada Health Response .nevada .gov site. That's a great website. Um, yeah. In the upper left hand corner, there's that button that says subscribe to updates. I've actually subscribed. They keep you up to date. That's a great website to find out what's going on within the state as well. And there's actually a link for the state too. It's um, it's this little computerized Microsoft website where it's real live 
updates. I'll share that link with you. I keep it up on my computer all the time and I just refresh it, but it lets you know the exact count of how many tests um, Nevada has done, how many people have tested positive, how many people have tested negative, the percentage. Um, so geographically where, where they are and then also the percentage um, of people and then it breaks it down by um, gender as well. And so interesting um, that more women are testing positive. So I think it's about 55% of women and yeah. then it's a uh, 38% men, and then the rest is unknown or undisclosed. Gotcha. Anything else that you uh, think the public needs to know? We're, we're doing this in a recorded fashion because it, unfortunately it didn't go live to Facebook, but I'm going to go ahead and share this on Facebook after the fact. What else can you share with us, Sandra, right now that's coming from a state level? I think that as long as people are following the directive from the governor and staying home, then um, we'll see, you know, leveling up. We know that it, our, we were going up like this and um, all trends show that if people follow the directive and stay home instead of going up, we will come down and then flatten out. So gotcha. I think that Nevada is doing a great job of staying home. And I think that's the number one thing that we want to stress. Like we can't stress that enough is, you know, um, stay home for Nevada. Cause that's the, yeah. that's, that's how we're going to help our state. And that's, that's the fastest way for us to recover from this and then really get back to our industry. I know a lot of my real estate and lender partners are, you know, want to get back to their normal um, form of business. And the fastest way to do that is to, you know, get to that peak and then come down. Right. Which we're all waiting for. But when it comes to social distancing, it's great that we have these kind of forums, this kind of technology to be able to share information uh, make sure again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that are watching this after the fact, um, you know, I, I'm going to share this website, which is the May team website on the, uh, video that we're doing. I'll put it below. Um, if you need to have a discussion about buying or selling a home, you know, we are doing zoom video conferences. We're doing video online conferences. We're conducting virtual open houses. Joe here is now conducting virtual signings that don't need an actual physical signer. Uh, Tycor Title, Sandra, I know that they still have offices that are open and typically you need to have some human beings signing that deed and that uh, deed of trust and those notes. Um, how are you guys doing as far as the amount of offices open or have you centralized the offices um, as far as an actual buyer and seller signing their documentation? I believe we've closed one office and we have, we're operating with the least amount of people in each office as possible. There needs to be someone there to get FedEx packages and send FedEx packages out, but um, that's about it. Everyone's working from home. And as far as signings, um, all of our buyers and sellers are virtually signing documents or docu signing everything that they can. And we're doing um, with very very limited, a few, just a handful. I think, um, I think three next week are scheduled, but doing curbside signings just for the documents that need to be notarized. So, um, a buyer or seller can drive up. We'll come out with a clipboard of just the document that needs to be notarized because that's the only one that we need to witness. And we hand them the clipboard. They sign it. We take it and notarize it. And as far as um, all the other documents, they're sent to a, ahead of time to them, and um, they can docu sign them. And then we schedule Zoom meetings to walk through the documents with them. That's terrific. So that saves a lot of time and a lot of personal interaction. But so you're conducting Zoom conferences to go through all the documentation and then you just drive up and sign the deed of trust with the uh, escrow officer that's a notary. Yeah. Oh, um, if it's a seller, they just come in and sign um, we, their wire instructions. We notarize those to make sure they're accurate. And then we notarize their deed of trust and that's it. We make it very effortless and painless for them. Terrific. Well, hey, you guys, thanks so much for joining us. If Sylvia, thank you. Lawrence, Gaggy, thank you for joining us. And uh, we're going to share all of this information live on Facebook later on with the link to connect. And Sandra, make sure and email me your list of links, and I'll add it to my list of links, and then we'll go ahead and share it with the public. I really appreciate you guys joining me. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Paul. Everybody stay safe. And just like this too shall pass, this flu shall right. pass. So thanks a lot, everybody. I really appreciate it. Thank All you. right. Bye-bye. Everybody have a great evening. You See you later.